world, then you move. Right. Hey guys and girls, my name's Dan, welcome back to The Forge. In this episode of Rough and Ready, we're gonna be stripping down the power hammer and cooking some sausages. These Rough and Readies are a vehicle for me to give information over that I normally wouldn't cover in a basic video or a tutorial video. Um, they're sort of day-to-day -day life here in the workshop and the forge and um, sometimes they're not very coherent, sometimes they're a bit messy. In this episode, we're going to be cooking some sausages with a toasting fork that we're going to make. You could use that toasting fork for toast or burgers or sausages or steak, basically anything you can hook onto it and hold over a flame. It should pretty much do that. So um, that's one of the things that we're going to cover and we're also going to be repairing some parts on the massive. Anyone who is in any way, shape or form mechanically minded will cringe at certain points during this video. Anyone who has ever had any serious grasp of mechanical engineering or just general civil engineering or just fitting in general. Um, I'm a plant fitter by trade, that's what I did when I left school um, and I have got some real bad habits. Yep. Yeah, we're still very much attached to this, aren't we? So if you do see anything in this video that you, makes you go, Ooh, why did he do that? Oh, he's gonna break that. Oh, why has he done that? Um, I appreciate that. Leave, obviously leave it in the comments and tell me what a dunderhead I am and a savage, disgusting creature. Uh, and then at the end we'll talk about some of the things that I want to change that I have done, um, which I feel real bad about. <laughs> right, so a couple of jobs to do. We're gonna take the belts off and just have a check of the motor, make sure there's no grinding noises uh, and grease the bearings and give it a clean. We're gonna drain the oil into this gipping tank here. Um, and then um, we're going to take this part off, the stuffer box, and I've got some bits to go and replace the glass on here because it's all gooed up and everything. And that's it for today. We're going to take all these covers off and reseal it, give it a good clean, or clean-ish, ish, a bit. And that's it. That's what we're going to do. So, yeah, you fit. Twenty. Zero point two. Zero point two, yeah. Forty one. Zero point four one. Ever since I've had the power hammer, uh, it sort of falls off of work, which means this bit, as you're using it during the day, slowly drops down as it warms up. And uh, I was speaking to John, John Nicholson. Some some people might know him. He's the guy that runs what's left of BNS Massey. I don't understand it particularly well, but um, he he did say that the last time we used some uh, seal, jointing paste to seal this up. I don't necessarily think that that's worked very well this time. So what we've done. Just measured it up all the way around. Um, we're going to put jointing paste in again. I'll show you what that is later. But we're also going to shim these with some actual pieces of metal. Put the shims in and then hopefully that's going to make everything nice and uh, tight again. And some more work. Oh, good job, Dan. It's always a pleasant sign to see all the nice sparkly things that were part of the power hammer, now part of the waste oil. Whoa, don't you move. Right. So earlier it's very kindly I've done all the bolts on the top of the ram, so we can take that bit off now. Uh, and then we'll, what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to lift the ram out through there. Well, top of the cylinder. We're taking all the covers off now. Um, and I'm draining the case, so oil gets stuck up here, so I'm draining that out at the minute. Uh, and then I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip all the piping down that's on the side for the oiler. 
I'll show you that as well in a minute, but um, I'll let, uh, I'll let you take the glory, mate. You up there, are you? So, in the video, you will have seen us try attempt to lift this, or at least you might have seen us attempting to lift it, made it out from what little you could make out from that high speed footage, um, or sped up footage, it wasn't necessarily high speed. But um, the problem was, when this came to me, this had a, um, <clears throat> this had a uh, shackle in here, and the shackle wasn't the greatest. It had had bits welded to it and all sorts of things. And it worked the first couple of times we took this apart, and um, either because I've taken this off twice before, or because, um, I've used the VT, uh, the RTV, sorry, VTR car. Uh, <laughs> um, either, well, either because of one of those two things, um, basically it pulled out, and I found out that it had a load of tape wrapped around it, so it would fit the thread, which is really helpful considering that this was over, well, up in the air, uh, a couple of times before. So um, we've managed to find a different shackle here, and this one is much better in here. It fits nice and nice and cushy in here so uh, get back to the I'll let you get back to the rest of the video and um, yeah enjoy That's like the answer with their jeans. <laughs> not me, the, not the rags. <laughs> Nice. Okie dokie, so it's the next day, I'm standing on the flywheel, this is the compressor end, and there's the valve, and that's the working ram, and uh, I just sort of go over some of the things that we've been doing, so I'm taking the top off here, I just wanted to check to see if the cylinder had any scratches or scores or anything on it like that, uh, it's looking pretty good and there's oil and everything in there, so I'm quite happy with that end. I think we need to do some adjustments to the valve, but um, I need to speak to John Nicholson a bit more about that, he's the, he's the main Massey man, and then this end is where all our problems are so I'm going to do a bit more of that today 
and uh, this is the chaos that is the workshop at the minute so yeah and also we've opened these big doors up got a load of bits on top of the uh, forklift over there should we're giving her a good clean as well so she looks lush and uh, Elliot's just been um, putting these covers back on just clean these faces off and then we're uh, gasketing the covers back on just tidying it all up and making it look smart I'm gonna put the valve the filter back in now down there and uh, yeah we're uh, getting ready to put the stuffing box back together which is here Okay, so this is a filter out of it, and it says, where is it, auto clean with a K, uh, strainer to clean, turn handle. And uh, you basically spin it, and there's a series of um, little blades in here that some are held and some aren't. And as you spin it, it removes all the scuzz and nastiness out of the oil. I think basically the oil comes through this way, seeps through, and then up comes out of this end or the other way around I'm not 100% sure but I think it would filter more if it was here so anyway so the oil that sits in the side of the power hammer I'm going to put it back in now and it's what we use to clean the oil it's quite a clever little bit of kit really uh, I take it out every now and then and make sure there's no gunge in it and stuff which is very clean normally and uh, yeah so there next time I take this out I think I'm going to strip it down but I hear it's a bit of a mission to put back together so uh, not today <laughs> we've got enough to do Okay, one of the problems I've always had with this power habit is this piece of glass here. I don't know if that's going to focus or not. No, of course it's not. Anyway, it's full of like grinding dust and all sorts of crazy stuff. And it is the sight glass for the oiler. So what I'm going to do is um, when it's all back together, I'll show you this working. But my lovely girlfriend, Ella, she cut me a piece of Perspex uh, with the laser cutter at college. And I, I've just sealed that in there, so I'm going to let that dry now. And then after it's dried, uh, we'll fill it up with water, and then you'll be able to see the little drips of oil run through. I've never been able to show you before because uh, of this really crappy piece of glass. Okay, so this is the stuffing box. So um, these slides come out, and then basically what we're doing is we're putting these shims in, side here, to shim out the stuffing box to take up the gap. And then I'm using this stuff called a stag jointing paste. I'll show you it now stuff here I'm putting that in there to fill up the gaps and then um, these tapered bolts go in these holes here and then hold it all together basically and then I'll put the put the seal back and I'll show you it the other way up in a minute and uh, yeah getting there last one to do that's going back together Okay, it's all together now, uh, looking pretty good. Um, this jointing paste gets everywhere though, which isn't good. Um, but uh, it's a lesser of two evils, I hope. Um, the hammer itself isn't in very good condition. There's a few things on it that are a bit busted up. These slides, for example, they've got scores and scratches down them. They've been like this ever since I've had it. I don't think um, they're scratching themselves to pieces anymore, but they were at one point. Um, and, um, when I first got it, so things like cleaning these ports out, so air comes down here, and then um, it goes down this recess. I'll see if I can get some light in here. That's better, you can see what's going on now. So air comes in here, one of these ports, and goes down through and blows out through these two drillings here, and that pushes the tape, which is this stuff here, and keeps it in contact with the ram on the radius sides, um, which is quite clever, really, when you think about it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the tape back in. I'm going to put it in with a little bit of oil, and then uh, yeah, and then um, we're going to put this back in. Yeah, keep going. Hang on, hang on. Yeah, keep going.
Right, I've got some sausages, I've got some bread, and I've got a bit of metal. Let's make something to cook with. I'm going to use a piece of 25 by 8 or uh, inch by 5 16 so I think I've got about 120 millimeters marked off here which is just shy of 5 inches so, uh, so it's 4 inches and 3 quarters pretty much. So what I'm going to do, just get this hot, get it underneath the fly press, give that a nice squeeze, um, draw this out and then we're going to knock this into a fork. Okay, so I've cut about 60 millimetres off, so two inches and an eighth, roughly, off. And um, I took an angle grinder and just slit them up the middle and then drilled a hole in the end. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up and then forge these out into the forks. Hopefully I can get them nice and skinny. This has come out pretty nice um, and I'm going to stack some sausages on it now and I'm going to cook them over the fire, an open fire this time. Um, so for all those people that said I wasn't actually cooking on the forge because I was heating up a piece of metal. Um, <laughs> let's, uh, let's have some of these nice Aberdeen Angus beef sausages. So we've got charcoal in here, um, not really supposed to cook um, directly over um, coke, it's a bit nasty, it gives off a little bit of sulphur. Uh, if anyone's worked with, um, if anyone's ever worked with coke you'll know, um, you'll know it gives off a bit of sulphur. And uh, yeah, I've just built up a bed basically of some hot charcoals, coals, rested the old fork and uh, just going to let them cook on each side for a bit, takes about 10, 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, depending on the size of the sausage. Remember, disinfect your anvil. Bit of red sauce. I know everyone moans about the bloody red sauce. Well, yeah. Grubs up. Okay, this turned out lush. Really enjoyed doing this. Um, we've used it quite a bit over the last however many weeks it's been since I made it. Um, 
and um, loving, absolutely loving using it. Um, and I think I'm gonna put a couple up on the Etsy if I get some time, if I've got five minutes, they only take 20 minutes, half an hour to make. So I might chuck a couple of them up onto the Etsy and I made a little spatula thing as well. Um, if people are interested, um, I might chuck a couple of those up. I might do some steak hooks as well. I fancy them up a bit, put some twists in them and stuff and make them look real dapper. But yeah, if you're interested in getting your hands on those, they might be up on the Etsy, so keep an eye out for those. Um, but yeah, so works lovely. Definitely worth a try. Okay, I've decided to split this episode in half. It was getting a bit long and I've got loads of content that I want to share. So basically what I've decided to do is split the Power Hammer rebuild into two episodes. Uh, next episode you'll see it running. We'll be fixing the oiler. There'll also be some stuff uh, where we set up the valve and all that good stuff. So check that out. And we're also going to be making some more tools. We're going to be making a set of these lovely little tongs that I made uh, so that we can make some stew. Um, we are going to make a stew. We use Dutch oven over the forge and all that stuff. This turned out great as well. Really enjoying this and there'll be some more of this good stuff in the next episode. So you'll see all of this in action. Okay, this hammer was bought with the help of someone lending me some money, a friend, and then my auntie very kindly uh, gifted me some money in order to buy um, the phase converter. Uh, that runs it because we don't have three face here and um, up until very recently it's always been a bit of a budget in exercise keeping this running and sadly that's made made me make choices um, like the fly press itself was 350 pounds with the table and it ever since it's been in this workshop it has made me money every single time i've used it for the sort of multi-purpose work that we use it for and that's been incredible and it's been really good whereas this up until very recently hasn't been doing that and i've made choices by when it came it had uh, gaskets in it and i took the gaskets out and i spoke to john and John said, oh, be careful, they might be asbestos. And the tape that was in the stuffing box, he was like, also, oh, that's probably asbestos. And there were some real problems with this stuffing box when we first got it. It was all sorts of wrong. Um, and I had to make cost-effective choices. So I, I didn't buy gasket material to replace the gaskets. Instead, I bought, um, I bought some black cardboard from a hobby shop, and that worked. But it was time-consuming, and then... Um, the RTV was used uh, and that seemed to see it up and work so it kind of got stuck in that and then when we took it apart the cardboard had stuck to the RTV and it was very hard to clean it off so I made bad choices and um, I've made bad choices in taking this apart this time as well um, because the way I've had to try and get it apart I'm not, it's not been very friendly to something that I love very dearly but yeah so I apologise for any savagery that anyone may have seen within the video and it's not done it's not done yeah it's not it's not done maliciously a na naivety uh, ignorance potentially but um, malicious it is not because I love this thing and it's really important to me now if you know anything about these hammers you know that these inertia blocks that go underneath them are a hell of a lot of concrete uh, especially if you do it by the book, which we kind of did. There's the right size hole under here for this machine at least. I think I have the wrong drawings because I put the box in that was the right size and it ended up being too low. So I ended up having to lift the anvil up ever so slightly. Um, and at the time, again, budget meant that it's not the best fix. So at some point, what we're going to do next as well is we're going to pick the power hammer up and we're going to take the anvil out and I am going to fix that part and re-wedge the hammer in because I've not wedged this in very well and um, to be fair it causes a lot of problems. It's good, it doesn't it does the job but it does cause me problems. The dies need grinding, they need flattening off and sorting out as well. I need to get that all apart. So at some point in the not so distant future there'll be a part three and part four um, 
it is going to involve taking this out and getting it stripped down, um, getting this out of the ground, maybe pouring a bit of concrete, probably some reinforcing in there. Depends on how we deal with it, maybe some fabrication work. Um, and I might even lift this up as well and get this a bit higher so that um, I'm not bending over as much when I'm using it. But there are things that are going to happen in the future. And I thought I'd just talk about them now. Uh, they will be happening fairly soon. I hope at least get the wedges sorted and the base of this sorted this year, hopefully. So, um, yeah, that would be a bit exciting. I'll be actually picking up the power hammer and lifting it off from the forklift truck that you saw in this video. Thank you so much for joining me. Hopefully you did enjoy this video. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you are a subscriber, make sure you ring that bell for notifications. It'll tell you every time I make videos. I try to make videos as often as possible, but splitting this one up, making it a bit shorter, hopefully there'll be a bit more content overall. I've got loads of little bits and bobs for these rough and readies waiting and ready to go. If you'd like to support the channel in any other way, you can do so by doing a couple of things. First one is leave a comment, a super simple thing to do. Just drop it down in the comments below. Uh, tell me what you thought of the video, tell me how, what you thought I did wrong, tell me what you think I could improve on and all that lovely stuff. You can also share this video, share it on Facebook or Instagram or wherever people share stuff. I've never done that before, but if you did want to share the video, please do that. That really does help get the word out there that we've got an awesome channel where we do amazing blacksmithing stuff. You could also follow some of the links that are in the description. In the description, there's a link to the Instagram where I post stories and posts and images of some of the cool stuff that we get up to. Uh, if you want a bit extra, that's a great way. If you wanted to talk to me as well, you can DM me on the Instagrams. Uh, so that is a good way to get in touch. Uh, probably the easiest way to get in touch with me. You could also go over to my Etsy. At the Etsy, we make hammers, tools, tongs, merchandise, stock. I've got everything. You name it, it's probably over there and it's good for blacksmithing. If it ain't worth using, I'm probably not selling it. So if you do want to get your hands on stuff, go and check out the website, uh, the Etsy, because it's a great place to get blacksmithing kit. Thank you so much for joining me. Hopefully you did enjoy this episode. I'm gonna leave it there and I'm gonna put a link up here to a video that YouTube thinks was good for you. This is a link to one of the most recent uploads and this down here will be the previous rough and ready. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, yeah, that's the subscribe button. Bye bye.